Hey Luke here with catsandcarp.com. I'm catching channel catfish at night and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing, what I'm using, and how you can do it too. Alright, let's get these bad boys back in the water. In this video I'm going to show you how to catch big channel catfish and I'll be fishing at night. Now I'm using my boat, but you don't need a boat to do what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be fishing in about 7 feet of water within casting distance of shore. So whether you're bank fishing or boat fishing, hopefully this video will have something for you. In this video, I'm going to be fishing with live gizzard shad, but you can just as easily use bluegill or skipjack or any other live bait fish. It's a warm spring night and the shad are doing exactly what they normally do in this type of weather conditions. They're up near the surface and they're shallow. They're about seven and a half feet or less. Now in deep water, you can see they're kind of sparsely scattered. There's a few here and there. They're kind of spread out quite a bit in this uh, area that's about 20 feet deep. And you can see them here on the side imaging sonar. Now, shallow water is where you want to go in these conditions at night. When it's warm at night, the bait fish come in shallow. Look right here. We get in about nine feet of water and those shad are just packed right in here so this is where we're going to go to get our bait but this is also where we're going to go to catch our catfish because if you can find the bait you're going to find the catfish so a great school like this is a good place to get some bait so i'm using a 10 foot cast net to catch these shad gizzard shad won't bite a hook or line so you got to use a cast net or a gill net and it's a 10 footer it's got about uh, one and a half inch mesh uh, 10 it's a 10 pound net um, I chuck it out, I let it sink about 10 feet. You don't want it to go all the way to the bottom or you'll get snagged up. So I watch the, the lead and measure out about 10 feet of line. And once 10 feet of line has gone out, then I jerk it closed and pull it up. And uh, you can see here, worked out really nice. Got a net full of, of fish here. I got about 12, 13 gizzard shad, all of them about oh, 10 inches, 12 inches long. These are perfect bait for channel catfish, blue catfish, flathead catfish. I love these suckers. And so uh, really quick, I uh, try to get them out of the net into a bucket and I put them into my live well. Now my live well circulates water constantly. It doesn't have an aerator, it just constantly pumps in water and pumps out old water. If you don't have a, a live well that does that, if, you, uh, if you, it doesn't pump in water, change the water uh, within a minute or two after you put them in because they tend to like poop and vomit up stuff when you first put them in the live well and it's toxic. So my live well sort of flushes that out automatically, but if you don't have one that does that, make sure to change the water um, a couple minutes after you add the shad and they'll live longer. And you wanna keep them alive. Um, so at any rate, after about three, three goes, I have about 20 shad put the net away and I'm ready to start looking for fish. So in this, uh, in the daytime, the catfish like to hunker down in around structure. So you can see right here, a bunch of sunken trees. You can see it really clearly on the side imaging sonar. You can see the stumps on the down imaging sonar on the left. Uh, this would be a great place in the daytime. The bait fish hide in here, the catfish hide in here. Nothing really moves around much in the middle of the day, but it's nighttime. Everything's out and about in the open. The shad are in the shallows. And you can see here, you've got uh, shallow water to the left and you've got this deep 20 feet of water. All the shad are in the shallows. Um, they're feeding on that phytoplankton and the zooplankton at night. So you know you're not gonna go deep water, you're gonna wanna go to shallow water to find your bait, and that means you're gonna go shallow to find your catfish. So I'm anchored up in about seven or eight feet of water here. I'm on kind of the edge of a deep trough, and I'm using this uh, three ounce lead on a slider with a bead, a swivel, about 18 inches of 80 pound monofilament leader, and a 10 on Gamagatsu circle hook. And I'm uh, taking one of these uh, shad, and I'm hooking them through the back. And I'm right behind the dorsal fin, about a half inch into the flesh. And I'm, that's how I rig them up uh, as live bait. This is a fabulous, fabulous way to get big, big channel catfish. I have six rods and I'm gonna be casting them out in a fan pattern over these flats. And you wanna cast them in different directions at different distances so that you're less likely to get tangled up. It's absolutely pitch black out. So I've got bells on the end of my rod so I can hear the hits and it doesn't take too long. Along comes a little kitty and wham. Now you can see what I'm doing here. I'm reeling the rod tight 
before I take it out of the rod holder. When you have circle hooks, that's how you set the hook. You wait until the rod goes down and stays down for a second or two. You can There's like a continuous bite for two or three seconds. Then you reel down until the rod bends over and you're sure the fish is on. And once that happens, then you pull the rod out of the rod holder. This is a real typical channel catfish. This is about the size of a fish that I normally catch fishing with live bait on this reservoir. Um, live bait gets you the big boys. You don't get the little one, two pound channel catfish nibbling on your line. These are really big, fat, healthy, strong fighting channel catfish. Wow, it is darker than dark out here. It is moonless, it is starless. There's not an electrical light to be found other than what I brought with me. This is real night fishing here. When you're night fishing, you don't want to leave your lights on all the time because it'll attract tons of bugs and you'll be breathing in bugs all day. So get a little rechargeable uh, spotlight like this. They're about 30 bucks at Home Depot. And you can sit there and when you hear a bell ring, you can click it on and shine it on your rods and see what's going on. A spotlight is really handy for keeping a lookout for debris in the water or floating logs when you're driving your boat at night. But headlamps are also really good. So if you don't want a spotlight, go get yourself a really nice uh, headlamp. This place I'm fishing is not near the traditional catfishing spots. There's no sunken logs or holes or uh, you know, slopes. It's a wide open flat. It's about seven feet deep and it's really featureless and we're just crushing it here because it's at night at night the fish aren't hiding the fish are out hunting so you go out into hunting grounds not hiding places in the middle of the daytime concentrate on hiding places at nighttime go to hunting grounds all the shad are about seven feet of water so if you want to catch big boys like this these big boys are out hunting the shad in the shallow water so find the shad find the bluegill, find where all the bait fish are, and you're going to find nice fish like this. The bells I'm using are do-it-yourself bells that I make at home, and here's a video on how to make those. And I have some high visibility electrical tape around my rod to protect the rods from scratches. The purpose of the bells is not to tell you when you have a fish. The purpose of the bells is to tell you when your bait's been stolen. Anybody can tell when they have a big 10 pound catfish on the end of the line. But knowing when something's ripped your bait off and gotten away with it is super important. Because when that happens, you're sitting there fishing with a bare hook and you're wasting your time. If you get a strike that steals your bait when your back's turned, and you don't know about it, you'll end up fishing with a bare hook all night long and you won't catch anything. Using the bells is important so that you don't miss it when a fish steals your bait. Another fat channel cat. Look at that. Look at the bellies on these bad boys. I installed the lighting system on my boat myself and it's essentially four floodlights, LED floodlights on the bimini top of my pontoon boat. These things are uh, 32 bucks for a pair of them. They're 1800 looms and draw 1.1 amps per hour, my 24 volt trolling motor system. I've got uh, these switches that I installed on the, the uh, armrest of the captain's chair and I put in a pair of these lights on the side of the boat so I can see when I'm netting fish. 
and I upgraded the docking lights to high power LED lights so I could see what's going on in front of the boat as well. Absolutely awesome. It's essential for vid shooting video at night. I, I couldn't live without it, but it just makes things super easy and convenient. It takes hardly any power, so they last you know days without charging. Um, and it just lights everything up like noonday, so it makes it super convenient to go night fishing. This is a really easy project for a do-it-yourselfer because you don't need any relays. You just wire the lights directly to the switches and to the battery, and that's it. It's not very fancy at all, and it's such low amperage that you don't need to uh, worry with some of the things you do need to worry about with halogen lights. I've heard people say that, that lights scare away fish. It's not been my experience at all, but the biggest problem is it draws in a lot of bugs if you leave them on too long. Hey, look at this catfish. It's got these little pimples all over its body. It's got pimples. See all these pimples all over its body. I see this every once in a while. I have no idea what it's from. If you uh, know what causes these little catfish pimples, uh, leave a comment. Let me know. Be curious to know. Well, it looks like a worm or something. Night fishing for catfish is an awesome thing to do for a lot of reasons. First off, the catfish are a lot more active at night. If you're bank fishing, um, they'll come in shallow, so it's easier to get access to big catfish at night. Um, but on top of that, I'm a working father. I've got a family I care about. I've got a lot of things on my plate. I just don't have all day to sit on the bank fishing. So this is a weekday. I believe it was Wednesday. Um, I put in a full day at the office, I come home, I play with my kids, I put them to bed, and then I go out fishing. And so this is a way for me to sneak in a couple hours of fishing in the middle of the weekday. And sun sets at 7.30, 8 o'clock, and so you know I just don't have time to get out fishing until the sun sets. Well, it's just convenient that that's also a fabulous time to catch a lot of big catfish. So if uh, you're trying to sneak in a few hours of uh, fishing to catch some big fish, it's a great way to do it. You try some night fishing. This channel catfish made a mess of my gear and was deeply gut hooked. But I was able to get the circle hook out without injuring it too badly by putting my hands in its throat, getting down into its stomach, and gently twisting the circle hook backwards. Don't ever try to tear it out. But if that doesn't work, Woo. clip off as much of the hook as you can reach with a pair of wire cutters. Nice double. When you're releasing a catfish that you want to weigh, don't put the scale in its gills or in its jaw. Put them in the net and gather up a bit of the mesh and weigh them that way or use a weighing sling. It's much gentler on the fish. Whew, 13 pound channel catfish. That is a beauty. All right. Let's get him back in the water here. The rod I'm using is the Whisker Seeker medium heavy action rod. It's a seven and a half foot spinning rod. I've got an Okuma Trios 55S reel on it. It's a really good match for it. And I've got 40 pound braid. I really like this combo. It's uh, small enough to really have fun with these channel catfish, but big enough to land 40 plus pound flatheads. But at any rate, uh, it was getting late and I had to work the next day. So I packed it all up, pulled up my anchor and uh, had to call it a night, but it was a really great time, and you can see just really fast and furious action. Got a lot of really nice channel catfish. I'll show you one last trick here. With your anchor line, when you're stowing it, get one of those really big oversized carabiners from Home Depot, um, and when you make the loops, just clip it into the gate of the carabiner, 
and it'll keep all of your uh, anchor lines nice and tidy. And then when you want to throw the anchor, you just gather up all the rope in your hand, pop it out of the carabiner, and chuck the anchor out. It works fabulous for keeping your lines nice and tidy so that when you chuck your anchor out, you don't have knots uh, in the anchor line, which is a big problem. So nice little tip, make things a little easier for you. Well, hopefully you like this video. And if you'd like to get videos just like this every week, don't forget to click subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. I try to reply every time, and we always appreciate your likes. And uh, here's some other great videos you might like, including top eight catfish baits and another great tutorial on how to catch catfish. So if you like what you see, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.